In order to uh, write a method, you must analyze the, the pseudocode, the specs, and find the name of the method. In this case, the name of the method is first initial. Methods always begin with a lowercase first letter. In, in Visual Basic and Java and C++ and C and every other language we cover here at Wyvising. So that's the name of the method. It accepts the parameter. It accepts at least one parameter. So you do need parentheses here. <coughs> Methods always need parentheses, and the parameters go in the parentheses. It doesn't tell us what the name of the parameter is. If it did, it would say, uh, like, uh, the word word or something in here. And that word would probably be the, the courier font that I like to use when I give you exact things, because that's just how I am. So let's just make up a parameter named word. The parameter needs to have its data type specified here in the parentheses. The data type always goes in front of that made up parameter name word that we used. We don't need the, that big gap anymore. Uh, just pretend there's no gap there. OK, uh, a method always needs a set of curly braces to surround the body code of that method. And methods are always public. And sometimes we will later learn in this course they're static. It doesn't say anything about this being static. So I really don't care if you put the word static there or not. But there is something else that always goes here. Louis. It's called the return type. Yes, it's a data type, like int, double, string. But it's also called the return data type. And what is being returned here? It returns a string. Sorry, I'll take a, the, the answer myself. It's returning a letter, which it would not be an int. It would not be a double. And it is returning something, so you don't say void. It's returning a string. So you need the word string here, and that's got to be a capital S. OK, so that is a couple points worth of this worksheet question, we'll say. Getting the method header right and putting these curly braces in here. Now we have the fun part. What are we supposed to do in the body of this method? Well, somehow we have to extract the very first character of the string that was passed in as a parameter. So I need a, an example in my head. Like, let's say the word Travis is uh, what word is. We're just supposed to assume that this Travis string was passed from some method up above. And like from the skies raining down on the land or snowing, you know, Travis just drops into this parameter word. Do not declare word as a local variable. And do not, on top of that, set it equal to something like Travis. That is a common mistake that you cannot afford to make anymore. Parameters are already declared, in a sense, just by their existence in the parentheses here. You would not then declare a local variable with the same name as one of your parameters. Absolutely not. They always take off a point on the AP exam for that. And it just doesn't work. It'll, it'll give you a weird logic or compile errors. So what are you supposed to do? Well, ooh, you're supposed to assume that word has some, in this case, a string in it. Sorry about that. OK, uh, so how do I pull it out? Well, you could do it all in one statement. Return word. And this is where you have to just know what methods are available to you a method that would pull out a first character. You should know that there's a substring method in the string API that you're allowed to use on the AP exam. And it would be on your cheat sheet if you didn't remember how to spell substring. Do not capitalize the S. Methods are always lowercase first letters. Substring is overloaded. That is, it has two different ways of working, either with one parameter or sometimes with two parameters. Well, you only need, uh, you will need the two parameter version in this case. You'll need to put a 0, comma 1. It's that easy. And don't forget your darn semicolon. This version right here goes to position 0, and it goes up through and including this, the letter that's in position 1, but it doesn't include the letter R. It, uh, it pulls out the T, and that T 
as a string value is what gets returned back up to the method that called it. And this works no matter what word is in here, even Tommy, although that would be coincidentally also a T, or Geo. If Geo were passed as a string, the G would be uh, extracted using word.substring. Now this could be done other ways. You could have used another variable, uh, a local variable, but I like just doing this kind of thing in one return statement. During our commercial break, uh, Lewis asked if it would hurt if you had an extra set of parentheses in here. And I said, no, uh, that's perfectly acceptable. It's not necessary, but perfectly acceptable. Moving on, number two. The method header, uh, we'll do this quickly this time, public. Uh, the static's optional, leave a blank here for your return type. The name of the method is convert string to integer, lowercase c. And uh, does it take a parameter or not? Yes, it does take a parameter. You can name it whatever you want. But it is a string, string with a capital S. I don't like single letters as variable names, uh, parameter names either. It's just bad style, so I don't know. Um, you know I'm going to name this xylophone because I don't like X, and I needed a word that starts with X there because I started it. So there, that's my variable name. Kind of stupid, but it works. OK, what are we going to be returning when we're done with this? We're going to be returning an int. It returns an int. So the word int must go here. And that's got to be a lowercase i. And this p has to be a lowercase p, everybody. I'm tired of looking at capital P's as if you uh, are still doing Visual Basic. OK, uh, what are we supposed to do? Well, you just have to know this. From the API that you need to know for the AP exam, uh, there is a, a method in the integer class, the integer wrapper class that we're just barely studying this school year. There's this method called parse int. And the i in int is capital T. And this is just the way it is. This method right here, typed out that way, converts a string to an integer. So xylophone, assuming that xylophone is some string like 123, that 123 gets its quotes ripped off and then returns. Well, do we need an extra little variable here like int num equals? I guess you could do that if that's your style. If your name's uh, McKenna, you would like doing things this way. And then you would return num. Perfectly fine. We don't need to, to use the local variable num here. You could have just put the word return here in front of integer.parseint. Oh, we need a semicolon. But this also works. Now, she needs to declare int as a variable. You can't just make up num out of the blue and say num equals integer.parseint. Where's num coming from? Num is not a parameter. And even if num is a local variable up and above in the, in the program, it doesn't have scope that would work inside this set of curly braces. So you need to declare num. The computer doesn't know whether num is an int or a double or even a string. Yes, you could have a string named num, even though it would make no sense. So this is good style. And some people, they do this. I can see some people saying int num equals 0. Oh, that's nice. And then num equals integer.parseint. That's fine. That's just three lines of code where we could have done it in two lines of code, or we could have, as previously discussed, done all this in one line of code. It's all full credit on the AP exam and on any MINIC worksheet or test. So I'll let it like this. Any questions from the people here in this class that I'm teaching right now? Any questions at all? Number three. Ooh, now we're getting tricky with some math algorithms that uh, are not just simply one little uh, method from the API like parse int or substring. This is getting tricky. OK, uh, we have a public method here. They're always public, as I've been stressing. We need a return type here. Find tens digit is the name of the method. And it needs parameters, even if uh, this well, it needs parentheses, even if there are no parameters. Now, do we have any parameters? Yes. An integer is apparently passed to the method. There's no name supplied here, so we can name it geo. We'd have to put a lowercase g in for good style, though. And what data type is being passed here? Apparently, it's an int, lowercase i. OK, geo is a silly name. I should, for a, for a parameter, not for a person. Uh, so num, let's just make it num. OK, what's being returned here? Uh, returns the tens digit. Tens digits are always ints. 
So it needs an int there. Curly braces, and now let's get to it. I bet I can do this in one line of code. Return, did I see that somebody did system out print inside, the, inside one of these answers in this worksheet? Horrible, horrible, horrible. Never do that. It never says, typically in one of my exercises or on the AP exam, to system out print or display something. It always says to return it. So get rid of that. That's, that's bad. No system out prints. Okay, return. What are we returning? We're returning the tens digit. I need an example. Let's pretend that num is 123. The tens digit any second grader would know, and maybe even a first grader, is the 2. So how do I get that 2 out of there? Do not substring. That is so wrong to do something like this. Something dot substring, like num dot substring. That would be horrible. No way. That doesn't work. This isn't a string, so you can't label the position 0, 1, and 2 and say that you're starting at the 2 and going up to, but uh, starting at the 1 and going up to, but not including the 2 to pull out the 2. That is, you lose full credit. There's not even partial credit for this. So forget substring. This isn't a string that we're working with, so we got we got to use some kind of uh, way of doing it. Let's see. The tens digit. Well, if you, it's a well-known fact that if you mod something by 100, you always get the last two digits. It's just the way it is. And then if you have the last two digits, like the number 23, and if you divide it by 10 in Java, where this is an int and this is an int, it, it does the division, 2.3, but it chops off the chops off the ones digit. So you're left with the two, which is what we wanted here, the tens digit of the original number. So just take all this and divide it by 10. Now, if you're a safe person like Lewis, you'd put parentheses around this to make sure that the compiler does that first. I'm not sure if it works the other way around. Maybe it does. You can, you can figure out if num divided by 10 mod 100 somehow works out. I'm not sure. But I know that it works this way. And you don't need the parentheses because according to order of operations, which you do have to know on the AP exam, mod and division are tie. And it would work left to right. So it would have worked without the parentheses. But we do need a semicolon here. OK, number four, moving on. Remove the ones digit. I saw a lot of people do this a very complicated way, but um, I think it's simpler than you made it out to be. Uh, this is going to be public int remove ones digit. And uh, parameters, we have one parameter. I'll just call it num again. And we need uh, curly braces. OK, how do I do this? Let's, all do, let's just do it in one return statement, if we can. Oh, if num is divided by 10, Let's say num is a 123, and I want to remove that ones digit. What, what I therefore want is the number 12, because I've removed the ones digit. Well, just divide it by 10. Done. Integer division does that. It keeps it as an int and chops off the point 0.3. Oh, you could make this a lot harder by having local variables. There would be another way to do it, but you don't have to get fancy.